The year is 2000. As the new millennium began, the dot-com bubble was reaching new heights, with tech stocks soaring and investors betting big on the hottest startups of the day. But behind the shiny exterior, warning signs were emerging, and the bubble was about to burst with devastating consequences. The Nasdaq index, dominated by tech stocks, fell from a peak of 5,000 to under 1,200, wiping out trillions of dollars in market value. As the ripple effect spread globally, 1,000 tech companies went bankrupt, with thousands of employees losing their jobs. Investors lost billions of dollars as once high-flying tech stocks became worthless overnight. The dot-com crash was one of the largest single-day declines in stock market history. From the ashes of the dot-com bubble, one tech titan will soon emerge, who's going to massively impact the lives of 1.3 billion Indians. This man would be the co-founder of India's most valuable IT company, Infosys, and the architect behind world's most powerful digital innovations like Aadhaar, UPI, ONDC, etc. The man would be called as the big brain of India's digital revolution. Key player in India's growth story. My friend, architect of the Digital India Mission. India's leading entrepreneurs, Nandan Nilkani. Nandan Nilkani. Nandan Nilkani. Nandan Nilkani. The year is 1955. On the 2nd of June, in a Konkani Brahmin community, a boy named Nandan is born to Durga and Mohan Rao Nilkani in Bangalore. His father is working as a general manager at Mysore and Minerva Mills. As a firm believer of Fabian socialist ideals, the father's ideologies are soon going to play a role in Nandan's mindset. My father was a textile mill manager in a mill called Minerva Mills, which is on Magri Road. And today, I live in Koramangala. and in between i've lived both in jainagar and in btm layout well my actually my background is very ordinary uh, i lived in bangalore till the age of 12 and then my father's job uh, got into difficulties because the entire textile industry got into difficulties and he had to keep finding new jobs uh, time on he excels academically from an early age he attended bishop cotton boys school and saint joseph high school in dharwad karnataka But life has not been that easy for him. By the time he was 12, the mills at which his father worked were in trouble, and his father had a tough time going from job to job to fend for his family. He sends Nandan to his brother's house to continue his studies in order to further secure the stability of his education. Without any other options, the diligent and unwavering Nandan is forced to borrow books from his friends and relatives in order to prepare for one of the world's toughest entrance exams. JEE After months of intense studying and exams finally the day arrives when his hard work is now going to get rewarded He succeeds in getting into IIT Bombay one of the most prestigious engineering colleges in India uh, My father worked in a textile mill in Bangalore and then the the company that he was in had some difficulties so he moved on and had a, a roving job because he would go to different cities working in these mills and so he wanted me to have a stable education so uh, i went to stay with my uncle in a small town called dharwad uh, so in the year of 1973 i moved from dharwad to bombay to start living at the iit campus the year is 1978 ibm the big blue multi technology corporation has just left india after receiving strong criticism and backlash from the ruling party and the indian government With no other IT powerhouse in India, prudent and focused Nandan now sees that this is a chance for budding an Indian IT company to uphold the market of mini computers in India. So instead of going for a master's degree, he decides to begin his professional career with a computer agency known as Patni Computer Systems. Young Nandan who's recently graduated from IIT Bombay with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering was encouraged to try his luck by Mr. Narayan Murthy, a co-worker at Patni Computer System who is well renowned for hiring deserving applicants regardless of their field of study or work experience. He said I want a job. I said, "Hey man, this is February." 
why are you coming for the job now? He said, no, I want to go to a business school in the U.S. And therefore, I was preparing for my GMAT or whatever that is. So now I'm free till September, so I want. But, you know, I had a principle. It is better to have an intelligent man with you, no matter how short that period is because that intelligence will add tremendous value. So I gave him my tough learnability test. Of all the people that I gave that, he was the only one who got 50 out of 50. Around the same time after completing his bachelor's, Nandan gets married to Rohini Ragini who incidentally met him at a quizzing event at the IIT college and fell in love with him. But this is just the calm before the storm of a revolution that India is now going to see. The year is 1981. Collecting bits and pieces of insights and knowledge about the Indian IT sector and eroding it down with experience, Narayan Murthy, Nandan Nilkini and five other employees in full swing decide to start their own IT firm after leaving Patni Computers. It was quite easy for us to really establish that uh, level of corporate governance. In fact, it was easier for us because we were starting on a, on a clean slate. And this has actually resulted in tremendous uh, recognition. Big things often start with small beginnings. With a minimum capital of rupees 10,000 borrowed from Narayan Murthy's wife Sudha Murthy, Infosys is now born. If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. With substandard infrastructure and an unfavorable business environment, starting an IT company from the scratch in an era where getting a single phone connection would take up to two years is a Herculean task to accomplish. But despite all the uncertainties, Nandan, the marketing face of the newborn company, was juggling too many balls in the air to save the company from various business challenges. The year is 1992. Slow and steady finally hits the bullseye. When Infosys built India's first software campus on the five-acre site, this is when Infosys took the biggest leap of faith and decided to go public in the year 1993 and get listed on the stock exchange. By the mid-1990s phase, after hoisting their flags in the kingdoms of success, the Infosys founders started their march to be a global company as they believed that only those who can risk going too far will possibly find how far they can go. Well, we never thought of this company as a company to service the Indian market. Because even in those days, the Indian market for software was very minuscule. We always thought of it as a company which would use the capabilities and the talents and the skills of uh, Indian uh, people, Indian software engineers and attack the global market. And even then that global market opportunity was visible. It was not as big as it is today, but it was visible and we had had some experience in that. So we were quite confident that we could make uh, a large company out of that. The year is 1999. While climbing the ladder of global achievements, a fierce battle named the dot-com bubble is now having repercussions on the major IT and technology companies worldwide. Staying firm on its long-term vision, Infosys now achieves the unexpected of all, creating history in the Indian IT industry. It is now the first Indian IT company to get listed on the Nasdaq. With a stellar listing on the US bourse, Infosys is among the 20 biggest companies by market cap on Nasdaq. Nandan was instrumental in the success of Infosys. If Narayan Murthy was all about excellence in execution, Nandan Nilkini was about the big picture. He takes upon various responsibilities at the company including that of managing director, president and chief operating officer before making it to the position of CEO, replacing Murthy in 2002. He then serves as MD and CEO of the company, escalating Chris Gopalakrishnan to the position of CEO, serving as co-chairman. As the co-chairman, he now focuses on the key client relationship. He is a brand ambassador for the company and works on transformational initiatives. With Nandan at its helm between 2002 and 2006, Infosys saw its top line grow a whopping sixfold. Infosys market cap had jumped 367 percentage to rupees 1,15,000 crores. Success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do. The long-standing efforts that he had put forth in the field of technology not only made him earn good wealth and reputation, but also fetched him numerous awards. 
the year is 2006 nandan nilkeni is named businessman of the year by forbes asia he is also one of the youngest entrepreneurs to join 20 global leaders on the world economic forum foundation board and not only this he is felicitated with one of the india's highest civilian honors the padma bhushan The year is 2009. The world is reeling from the financial crisis triggered by the collapse of the Lehman Brothers. While India is not only suffering through a financial crisis but also an ethical crisis, a shocking stock market scandal which came to be known as the Indian version of Enron shook the entire country. One of Infosys biggest rivals, Satyam Computers has been implicated in a significant accounting scandal and its founders are found guilty of committing fraud worth rupees 7000 crores. On the other side of the aisle, unaffected by the catastrophic events taking place in the economy, fearless Nandan was constantly reinventing himself and upping his game. He publishes his first book, Imagining India: The Idea of Renewed Nation, and as one magazine put it, a story told by one of India's greatest dreamers who, having realized his dreams, is now impatient to help his countrymen realize theirs. He documents the idea of his dream project in this book, One Nation, One Card, The Aadhaar. It quickly gained a lot of popularity and is now called by the Prime Minister of India Dr Manmohan Singh who asks him to implement the project. On 9th July 2009 Nandan Nilkeni announces his resignation from Infosys. At the age of 54 he gives up his highly successful career of nearly 30 years in the private sector and joins government service to serve the country and becomes the chairman of the UIDAI to execute the project and also co-founds India's Nascom providing opportunity for all is really the central theme of what we have to deal with so i felt that here i was a ordinary person but because of the opportunities that i got i was able to do some things meaningful and i genuinely feel that this opportunity to be extraordinary from an ordinary background should be available to every man woman and child in india this was one project that truly needed all his qualities of strategic thinking attention to detail and enormous patience The UIDAI is composed of public and public sector individuals and within the public sector officers from almost every cadre be it IAS, IPS, IAFS. The mix of cultures and working styles could have ripped the project apart. Instead, with Nandan's constant guidance at monthly meetings in Delhi headquarters and Bangalore Technology Center, a cohesive and productive workforce emerged. Private sector attention to detail and the public sector understanding of scale and ground realities came together to deliver for the first time a large scale national project ahead of its schedule. Nandan himself quoted, "It was like doing a startup at the age of 54 and that too in the government." During his tenure as the chair of UIDAI, he implemented the Unique Identity Card or Multipurpose National Identity Card project in India, therefore helping the government create the population database digitally. The methodology was biometric and the project was also called the biggest social project on the planet by experts. The idea came from Nandan and he wrote the book and he acknowledges Nandan. Nandan did something which is another extraordinary thing to transform a country and disrupt a country. 600 million people in the world in India after independence after 60 years had no identity. They didn't exist. So Nandan came up with this idea of Aadhaar of giving them a unique identity digitally. and doing it in a time bound manner in 7 years 1.19 billion people have an identity nandan's tenure as the chairman of uidai from 2009 to 2014 was a testament to his perseverance and people skills as he went about quelling negative sentiment around aadhar aadhar enrolled over 1.3 billion people and today it performs over 50 million transactions per day Nandan was truly the Aadhaar behind Aadhaar. Aadhaar is another remarkable initiative, getting 1.3 billion people on one common identification platform, is a game changer for both tax collection and direct benefit distribution. It will transform the way government manages its subsidies and budget.
The year is 2014. After phenomenal success of Aadhaar, undeterred Nandan didn't just wish to stop here. He is yet again ready with his next stint and this time he decides to make his debut in the Indian elections. He joins Indian National Congress Party as a candidate from the Bangalore South constituency. With assets over more than rupees 7,710 crores in the affidavit filed for the election commission, he is one of the wealthiest candidates in the 2014 Lok Sabha election. But it looked like Nandan was barking up on the wrong tree. Like most other Congress candidates, he is swept away by the Modi wave. The day is 16th of May 2014. Even before the counting is over, he concedes his defeat losing 2,28,575 votes to BJP veteran Anand Kumar. Humbled at the hustings, he gradually withdrew himself from politics. He hasn't spoken about rejoining politics since. He soon realized politics is not his cup of tea. Since then, he has continued to evangelize the use of technology and digital identification in government schemes. The year is 2017. The pool of scholars undoubtedly took Infosys to heights, but the firm stumbled when the base of such a gigantic firm shook when MD and CEO Vishal Sikka announced his resignation, leaving all the stakeholders in a huge dilemma. In situations like this, when the leader himself is not happy with his own kingdom, gaining stakeholders' credibility and retaining their trust and money was like a pipe dream. Nara and Murthy's eyes were searching for a man who watched this firm grow right from its emergence to leading at the top and someone who can rescue Infosys from this outraging and contentious situation. Walking encyclopedia of the tech industry, one who is not just another insider or co-founder but a man who knows the company's business, landscape, people and culture too well and the man at the rescue is none other than Nandan Nilkeni. Back again in the game, he takes the throne of the legacy of Infosys, heading the position of chairman. It's a daunting task to make Infosys the bellwether it had once been, but Nandan is up for the challenge. With years of formidable experience in technology, government policy and nationwide implementation to create new sustainable pathways for India, he has not only conceived but has also developed and implemented a set of standard protocols in building blocks for digital India, such as the Universal Payments Interface that is UPI, eSign, DigiLocker, Account Aggregator and the Consent Based Data Privacy Framework. Billionaire tech pioneer Nandan Nilkeni, now 66, has one more ambitious goal. The high-profile Mughal is now helping the nation build an open technology network that seeks to level the playing field for small merchants in the country's fragmented but fast-growing $1 trillion retail market. At the end, it's not the years in life that counts, it's the life in your years. If it succeeds, the mom and pop stores can challenge the behemoths like Amazon and the Walmart-owned Flipkart. In a nutshell, what UPI did for payments, ONDC aims to do the same thing for retail. Nandan Nilkani, with his unstoppable determination and by keeping his nose to the grindstone, was filing the dug holes for entire India to introduce the new Atmanirbhar Digital India. Burning the candle at both ends, he co-founded Software Powerhouse Infosys Limited, became a billionaire and went on to spearhead a colossal government to create biometric identification for India's almost 1.3 billion people. His personal wealth is valued at $2.75 billion and is listed at rank 75 among India's 100 top billionaires on Forbes list of the world's richest people in 2022. He is also a serial investor and the co-founder of Fundamentum, the venture capital firm investing in early growth stage Indian startups, having invested in around 7 startups till date including Unicorns, FarmEasy and Spinny. Let's look at the billionaire's give back to the society. In 2008, he set up the Indian Institute for Human Settlements to help solve urban challenges for India. In 2017, he and his wife pledged to donate more than 50% of their total wealth to the Giving Pledge movement organized by Bill Gates. He is also the chairman of Step, a not-for-profit organization to improve basic literacy for millions of children in India. His journey has been a long and challenging one filled with both success and struggles. A middle-class boy who built the spine for Digital India and made a positive impact on the lives of millions of people, he continues to inspire India to think for the next big idea. This matters because this represents more than a billion people. A billion people, one-sixth of the world population. It matters because this is a democracy and it's important to prove 
that growth and democracy are not incompatible, that you can have democracy, that you can have an open society, and you can have growth. We hope that you found this documentary useful and you were able to gain inspiration from the life lessons of Mr. Nandan Nilkini. If you do like this video, share it with all your friends and subscribe to our channel Create Media so that we can come up with more documentaries for all of you. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Create Media signing off.